Hello and welcome back to geometry. We are in chapter 8, section 4, talking about proportionality theorems. All right, so <clears throat> we've been looking at triangles, and here's a really cool little feature. If you have a line inside a triangle that's parallel to one of its sides, so like this one here, where it, it intersects those lines, it actually intersects it proportionally. That means this segment right here to this, if I make a proportion, this to this, is like this to this. All right, so TU, if that's parallel to QS, then RT to TQ is like RU to US, or in, in words, uh, there you have it divides these two sides proportionally. All right? And then on the converse of that, if these two sides are divided proportionally, then these two lines are parallel. Boom. Right there. Let's look at a couple problems. We know that QS is parallel to UT. And we know these facts right here. What is the length of RQ? So that'll be our x. x to 9 is like 4 to 6. All right, I want x by itself, so I'm going to take that 9 and put it up here. x is equal to 9 times 4 over 6. I will simplify. 3 goes into both of these. That leaves me with a 2 and a 3. 2 goes into... 2 and 4 leaves me with a 1, and a 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So this is 6. There you have it. All right, the shoe rack shown here, BA, is 33 centimeters. CB is 27. CD is 44. And DE is 25. Explain why the shelf is not parallel to the floor. All right. Well, one way we can do that is 27 to 33. We will check to see, is this proportional to 44 to 25? Well, pretty easy to see here that it's not proportional because here we have the larger number in the denominator, whereas here that's the smaller number in the denominator. But if it wasn't quite as obvious, then we could just find their cross products, okay? So uh, here, 33 times 44 is 1,452, whereas 25 times 27 is 675. And since their cross products aren't equal, this does not form a proportion. All right. Theorem 8.8 8 is the three parallel lines theorem. So previously we had a triangle. So we had a triangle like this, and we had a side, and then we had a side parallel. And we said these two segments were proportional. Well, the same thing works if we have three lines like this. Imagine this was the triangle right here. We had this segment and this segment is proportional to this segment and this segment. So with the three lines, we have... The segment between these two first parallel lines, the segment between the second parallel lines, so u to v, and I mean u to w and w to y, the, this segment to this segment is proportional to these two segments. All right, so u w is proportional to to w y is like v x to x z. Boom. All right, so here's a problem. In the diagram, angles 1, 2, and 3 are all congruent. GF is 120 yards, DE is 150, and CD is 300 yards. Find the distance HF between Main Street and South Main Street. Now, they have not told us that these lines are parallel, so we'd have to establish that first. We know that these two angles are congruent. And if this is a transversal, if these two angles are congruent, that makes these two lines parallel because these are corresponding angles. And if corresponding angles are congruent, 
and the lines are parallel. And then we have the same situation here. Corresponding angles are congruent, therefore the lines are parallel. Therefore, we can say that these segments are proportional, and segment GH is what we would have to find in order to find the entire length. So we're looking from F to H, or H to F, but we don't know this segment right here. So I can set up a proportion. I've got 120 and X, and I have 150 over here and 300. Now, I don't like the X being on the bottom like that, so I'm going to flip that upside down. X to 120 is equal to, I need to flip this one upside down also, 300 to 150. And that's just a personal preference. That's not something you have to do, but that makes it easy for me to just go swoop. And then I have X is equal to 120 times 300 divided by 150. Now we can do a little bit of simplifying here. Chop off some zeros. 15 and 12. 3 goes into both of those. Leaves me with 5 here and 4 there. 5 goes into 300. Gives me 60 there. And so now I have 4 times 60, and that is 240. So this segment right here is 240. Now you could have also seen that saying 150 and 300. 300 is double of 150, and so this has to be double right here. Okay, but they're not asking for what is this length. They're being tricky, tricky, and saying what's the distance from H to F. So we have to add the 120, and therefore we have 360. Boom, and that is in yards, yardage, the distance from Main Street to South Main Street is 360 yards. All right, the triangle angle bisector theorem, that's fun to say, triangle angle bisector, 8-9 uh, says if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into segments, AD here and DB, that are whose lengths are proportional to the other side, so CA and CB. Okay, so you see here AD to DB is like CA to CB. All right, problem here, we have a ray and it bisects. All right, in that diagram, we have this angle, QPR, is congruent to angle RPS. This info tells us that this is a bisector. If those two angles are congruent. Use the given side lengths to find the length of RS. We're looking for this length right here. Okay, so we know that this length, QR to, is it Q? Uh, to RS, is like 7 to 13. Well, we don't know QR, we don't know RS, but we know that these added together give me 15. So QR is 15 minus X. This segment right here is the 15 minus the X. Take away the X. So QR is 15 minus X. because The whole thing is 15. So that take away the X. We get QR. RS is X equals 7 over 13. Cross multiply. We get 13 times 15 my oops 15 minus x is equal to 7x 15 times 3 is 195 minus 13x is equal to 7x and so we add 13 to each side sorry 13x plus 13x and 195 is equal to 20x divide by 20 and 195 divided by 20 gives me 9.75 x is equal to 9.75 
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of fun for everyone. Proportionality theorems. Check in again next time for more fun in geometry.